Now, I want to tell you a story about our 16th president. His name is Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> you know, the tall guy with the high voice. And Lincoln actually did have a high voice. And this is a true story. He's in the White House. A visitor comes in and sees Lincoln on his hands and knees shining shoes. So the visitor says, Mr. President, you're not shining your own shoes, are you? And he says, well, you wouldn't want me to shine somebody else's, would you? <laughs> now, what does that tell us about Abe Lincoln? Anybody? Humility. Humility. OK. Anybody else? Watch speakers. I guarantee you that you'll see this six or seven times out of 10. People feel more comfortable looking one way rather than the other. <laughs> They'll take the audience into account, but they look this way. They look to the right. And they never look to the left. So if you're sitting over there, how do, you, how do those people feel kind of disenfranchised? So the idea is sweeping, sweeping eye contact, and occasionally you land on people. And Michelangelo was a Neoplatonist. Now, what does it have to do with anything? What it means is that his philosophy of art was he wasn't imposing a concept on the marble. He was extracting what was already there. And he wouldn't just use any old piece of marble when he sculpted it. There's a quarry in Italy called Carrara, which then, as now, is a source of, uh, of great marble. He would go there and spend weeks looking at different slabs of marble until he could pick the ideal one in which he could see something like that, the David. The David began as an amorphous piece of marble, and all he did was take away what wasn't art and leave behind what was. So what's the lesson? When you manage people, don't draw. Draw out. Draw people out. Look at the strengths of your people. I find it's helpful to talk to people beforehand and say, what are you thinking? What would you like me to talk about? What's on your mind? Uh -huh. And that way it becomes a conversation. Uh -huh. You know, I'm try I always try hard to make a speech a conversation. 